Cinema 100 on Radio 4. Anton Lesser, Michael Sheen, Saskia Reeves, Bill Nye. Strangers on a Train. Written by Craig Warner. Based on the novel by Patricia Highsmith. The human soul can be likened to a pair of horses. One white, one black each pulling their driver toward a different path. The white horse is good, the black, base. And the driver, through his days on earth, labors ever to steer the two horses on a single road. Are you traveling alone? Yes. What's the book? Plato. I, uh, I grabbed it off the shelf on my way out the door. I didn't think I'd actually read it. <laughs> w will you uh, come into my drawing room for a drink? I've ordered some dinner. Well, they'll serve it in there. Have a drink with me. It'll pass the time. You have this all to yourself? Yeah, but what's the point unless you have a guest? Don't take offense, but I paid for your dinner. Oh. No, no, no. It's nothing. Charles Bruno. Guy Haynes. At least let me buy you a drink. There's no point. I have bottles and bottles. Here, have a swig from my personal flask. Nice, isn't it? I always fill it up and drink from the flask, never direct from the bottle. I like a bit of ceremony. Drink. Where are you going? Uh, Metcalf, uh, Texas. On business? Uh, maybe. Why don't you read me a bit of that book? The white horse is tall and lean, with clear, shining black eyes. He loves glory, but with temperance and modesty. He sees and follows what is true. He needs no whip to guide him, but will move at the sound of a word. The black horse is deformed, haphazardly composed, with gray and bloodshot eyes fixed in a defiant stare. His temper is pettiness and gall, and he disdains and ignores, when he can, every crack of the driver's whip. I agree with that 100%. Do you? Don't you? I think anyone is capable of anything. At the bottom of each of us is a god and a murderer. And either of those can get let out at any time if life plays us right. I, I don't think I've got a murderer in me. Oh, you've never met him. But he's in there, trust me. I think we start out as these, these huge immortal beings, and from the second we're born, we start to, to shrink and forget what we are. We forget our powers. We become mortal and, and small and, and gray, gray horses. Oh, I, I think that's the worst thing that can happen on this earth. Don't you? Here, let me, uh, let me read something to you. Okay. Um, it's a poem I, I keep in my wallet. Yeah. Let not young souls be smothered out before they do quaint deeds and fully flaunt their pride. It is the world's one crime, its babes grow dull. Its poor are ox-like, limp and leaden-eyed. Not that they starve, but starve so dreamlessly. Not that they sow, but that they seldom reap. Not that they serve, but have no gods to serve. Not that they die, but that they die like sheep. Steak and fries twice. <laughs> oh, wow. And then they realized it wasn't it a wasn't pie at all. At all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, uh, here. <laughs> Drink. Oh, thanks. <laughs> hey, you want to come to Santa Fe with me? Oh, oh, oh no, I can't. After Metcalf, I'm I'm going to Mexico for a few days, and then I've got a job to do. What kind of a job? I'm, <laughs> I'm building a country club. You're an architect? Yeah. A whole country club at your age? Wow. That's What's it going to be called? The Palmyra. I am going to join the Palmyra. I'm going to join right now. Here. <laughs> I, I've got two glasses. Give me that flask. One for you. Hey, don't spill it. To don't the Palmyra's it. first member, Charles Bruno. Now, you clink my glass and I'll know I am it. Ah. Woo-wee! You're going to be famous. <laughs> Woo-wee! Mm. We've got to do things in this life. Mm. I'm going to be immortal. I want to leave a trail of amazing deeds behind me. Things no one ever forget. I, I have this feeling so much is going to happen, but I'm just waiting. I, I'm waiting, waiting for... For what? To live my life. Life is on ice at the moment. My father deflects all my money into his own exchequer so I don't have any more money now than I had when I was at school. Why, well, you seem to do okay. Yeah, but it's not okay. You know why? Because every pleasure gets dirty coming through his hands. Ooh. It's not even his money. It's my mother's. He had his name put on it when I was a kid because he wanted to prevent me from having a life. <whistles> He's even locked my car up sometimes because, I, you know, if I wanted to go out, it makes me sick. It's always been their mission. The mediocre, leaden-eyed people... To, to, to smother anyone who's got a hint of a spark in them. Hasn't it? Mm. Huh? Why? Because they can't be us. That's why. So they, so they, so they want to kill us. Yeah, I, I, I think good spirit floats to the top. You building something in Metcalf? No. Tearing something down. <laughs> I'm, I'm arranging my divorce. You're married? Is she unfaithful? Huh? <laughs> I can tell by your silence she was. What kind of girl was she, huh? One, one of those uh, dumb southern redheads who gets easily bored? You don't aim white of the mark, do you? I know that kind of woman. My father had a string of them, a string of... What's her name? Miriam. A string of Miriams. And so I know them inside and out. Best friend, Lawrence. <laughs> That's what happened. My best friend, Lawrence, happened. It was going on all along, and not just with Lawrence. Who? Everybody knew. Everybody but me. But you're still married. Well, I didn't worry about getting a divorce until now. What's different now? <laughs> She's going to have a child. Not yours. <laughs> Not mine. You want to know the joke? She wants to come to Florida with me while I build the Palmyra. Why? <laughs> because the father of her child is married, and he won't be free till December. She's going to soil the whole thing with her filthy little hands. She says if I don't take her, she's going to come and anyway. She can't build, so she has to destroy. Mm. But her powers only extend so far. If she won't see reason, I'm going to turn down the job. Well, she's not going to see reason. Well, that's why I'm not getting my hopes up about doing the Palmyra. You can't let her lose you the chance of a lifetime. Well, what am I going to do? Oh, hell. She's not going to see reason. Why should she? She's not a reasonable thing. She's just a thing to be stopped. Uh, how? You think you don't have a killer inside you? Well, you should find him and start with her. <laughs> Not me. I'll do it then. With pleasure. It would be so easy. She's not a person. She's just a warm thing somewhere in the air that needs to get put out. I'll tell you what. I'll kill her for you if you kill my dad for me. Is that a deal? <laughs> sure. Think about it. We swap murders, then nobody could find us. Because none of the clues would make any sense. There'd be no motive. We'd have alibis. You, you wouldn't even know when I was going to do it. Suddenly, out of the blue, it would be done. You'd be free and nobody would come looking for me because we, we're strangers. We haven't even met. It would drive the cops crazy. What do you think, guy? Huh? Clink my glass on it. Come on. Clink it. <laughs> To the power and elegance of your imagination, Bruno. <laughs> Charlie. 
please? Call me Charlie? But couldn't you just put up with her for a while? It's impossible. But you've done so much work on it already. They'll only steal your ideas. I know. Why are you giving her so much power over you? What do you expect me to do? Tie her to a post in Mecca? <laughs> well, so she insists on going to Palm Beach. I mean, what if she does go? Would it be that bad? You put up with her all these years. Exactly, and I'm not putting up with her anymore. She's not going to disgrace me in Palm Beach, Anne. I just don't want you to regret this. I swear to you, Anna, I've kissed the Palmyra goodbye with no regrets. I'll send them a telegram tomorrow. Oh, here comes Daddy. No arguing in front of Daddy. Mr. Haynes, telephone. Guy, it's me, Charles Bruno. And guess where I am? I'm at the Kingdom of Fun in Metcalf. I did it, Guy. She's cold. She's lying there cold. I found her house, and I found her, and I followed her here. And, Guy, I love you. You're free now, huh? I did it. I was the last one to hear it. That voice, that voice that whispered I love you to you in the night, that lied to you in the middle of the night when she was lying there in the dark. And now she's lying there in the dark in the middle of the night, and it was, it was nothing. Like I said it would be, it was nothing. You, you there, Guy? She was just a warm black spot in the air, just a warm thing that was darker than the air with a, a voice which I was the last one to hear and which I had the honor of squeezing right out of her throat. She's quiet and dead and cold. <laughs> now you can love her all you like. Guy? Guy. Guy Haynes? Yes. Come this way. The quest continues for the slayer of Miriam Joyce Haynes of Metcalf, Texas, the victim of strangulation by an unknown assailant on Metcalf Island last night. Police, however, fear that obtainable fingerprints may be hazy. Mr. Haynes, when did you leave Metcalf? Did you go directly to Mexico? Did you harbor any animosity towards your wife? How long have you known Ann Faulkner? Did you know your wife had a lover? Did you know she was pregnant? Was it yours? Was it his? The husband of the deceased. Mr. Guy Daniel Haynes. Who was being held for questioning. Would you say you rose quickly to peaks of violent aggression? Has now been released. What a nice suit. How nice you look. And an alligator briefcase. That, that's very beautiful, Guy. I don't know why I'm here. Sit down. You've got the glow of success. I take pride in that. I, I've seen pictures of you laying stones on the palm mirror, and I, I take more pride in that than in anything else I've ever done. Waiter. I don't want anything. Just a drink. You'll see us together. It's dark. He doesn't. Yes, hello. Um, another scotch for me and one for my friend. I wasn't going to come. I'm glad you did. I told myself if you called me again, I'd go to the police and tell them everything. But you didn't. No. You came. I don't know why. Because we are in it together. No, we are not in it together. You are in it alone, Bruno. You asked me to do it. I You asked... said it would be perfect, the perfect pair of murders. You said that, not me. You agreed. You agreed with me on the train. Oh, I've had enough. Guy, don't go. Don't call me again. If you go now, I'll tell. I'll tell everyone about our plan. What plan? How's it going to look, Guy? Why would I kill your wife, someone I don't even know? Why would I go to Metcalf to kill your wife? Because you're insane. Why me more than you? Who would they believe? No, we've, we've got to finish it. I've given you your freedom, now you've got to give me mine. What do you mean? I want you to stick to the plan. I want you to kill my father. Don't try to contact me again. I'll say you paid me. If you don't kill my father, I'll say you paid me to kill your wife. That's all there is to it. How's it going to look? You've got to come into it with me. I've killed your wife. You are not leaving me out here alone. Don't involve me. You are involved, Guy, if only for one simple fact. That this deed I have done is like a crown on my head. And nobody can see it but you. How many fingers am I holding up? Quiet. 
<laughs> Go home and get some sleep, old chum. If Shaw really calls, you'll be the first one I'll tell. I don't need sleep. I need work. Doug Freer told me Shaw loved your drawings. The contract's just a formality, so sleep <laughs> while you can. Mm. Hey, look at this. It came in under the door. To the greatest architect in the world. <laughs> Question is, is it for me or is it for you? Let's see. Oh, it's a drawing. A house in Great Neck. Uh, I'll, I'll take it. It's from an old friend of mine, I'm, I'm sure. Whoa, hang on. Hey, come on. Look, it's got measurements for all the rooms in the house, plus the measurements of the grounds, but in paces, not in feet. <laughs> oh. 23 paces from the footpath to the cherry tree, 16 paces from the cherry tree to the side of the house, 10 paces along the side of the house. Hey, the back come on, door. give it here. <laughs> Do not use main stairs. All squeak. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Hi, Ed. Yeah, nothing, a joke. Oh, let me see. Oh, no, it's it's not even funny. Oh, I thought it was. Oh, well, I'm off. Oh, uh, don't forget to tell her about Deems. What about Deems? Oh, it's nothing. They, they've asked me to go back there and make a speech. That's an honor. Well, I'm not doing it. You have to. I don't feel like flying all the way to Chicago. I, I don't have anything to say. You don't feel like doing anything anymore, do you? I want to work. Let's look at your old sketchbooks from college. That'll inspire oh, you. Oh, Anne, please. Here you go. Oh. Oh, look. One of your old essays. <clears throat> A house should reflect the habits of those who live in it. Oh, that's good. For instance, will the child pause at the window for the view before he climbs the 15 steps to his bedroom to sleep? Oh, God. Hello? I want to see you, Guy. Sorry, wrong number. Let's go somewhere. Where? I, anywhere, a movie. Oh, what movie? Any movie, come on. The phone's ringing. Let it ring, come on. It's as if we hardly know each other anymore. If you'll only forgive me, it'll give me the strength to start again, to blot out the past from my mind, and to love you the way I was always meant to. Do you think my forgiveness will mean that much? It's the only thing there is. <gasps> you love me? Uh, yeah, I'm... Gonna get some popcorn. Oh, get me a Coke. I was watching the film too, guy. You were watching us. You were watching us. I want to know what you do. I want some peace. I can't walk in the street without seeing you out the corner of my eye. When are you going to do it, Kai? I'm not going to do it. We made a deal. You made a deal. You do it yourself. It'd be so easy, Kai. I've done all the planning. I know. I've I... been getting your insane letters. You read them? They're always the same. I know. Then when you really do it, it won't be like something new you're doing. It'll be like something you've done a hundred times before. I don't need any more letters. I already know the plan. I know what train to take, where to turn at the street lamp, how to get across the back lawn. I know the smell of the carpet and the sound of the grandfather clock on the landing. I've had enough. And now Myers got hold of your drawing, and Anne almost saw it too. Why didn't you tell me about it, Guy? Now, she, she, she doesn't concern you. Anything that concerns you concerns me. Oh, you are going to kill my father, and you are going to do it next Friday night. Oh, yes. I'm going away with my mother for just a couple of days. My dad will be home, and only the butler will be there. But you have to do it next Friday night, or there won't be another chance for months. How do you expect me to do it, eh? With my hands? I'll get you a gun. I don't want a gun. And you'll have to say yes by Monday, or I am writing to Anne. Now you leave her out of She's it. She's in on it with us, guy. She is in on it, too, if you want her to be. And tomorrow, you get a present from your friend, Charlie. Beautiful, isn't it? Elegant and compact. A minor masterpiece of architecture. <laughs> Put the bullets in the chamber and hear it spin. A cold beauty. I chose it just for you. Now for your daily letter. Dear Guy, it's Friday night at 8.25 and you're ready to leave your room. You check to make sure you've got the gun with you, several bullets, and the key to my back door. The lock on the back door is broken, but bring the key with you in case they've had it mended by then. Uh, 
No. You can't see me in here. You can't see me in here. Guy. Anne? Yeah, I got a letter about you today. I, I thought I should mention it. Should I read it to you? <clears throat> uh, dear Miss Faulkner, it may interest you to know that Guy Haynes played a greater role in the murder of his wife than the world at present thinks. In any event, he may not remain a free man much longer because the truth will out. Guy, it's almost Friday. Tell me when you're ready. I have nothing to do but this. Telephone. Guy, you want me to get it? No, no, I, I'll, I'll get it. Hello? Guy? It's Doug Freer here from Shore Realty. Oh, uh, hello, Doug. Uh, listen, uh, we've received a letter concerning you. I'm afraid it, it's, it's rather distressing. Shall I read it? Do, 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 to whom it may concern. Do, do, no doubt it will interest you to learn that Guy Daniel Haynes, whose wife was murdered last June played more of a role in the deed than the courts at present realize. Soon there will be a retrial and his real part in the crime will come to light. This is not a joke. This is from one who knows. We're all sure that this is just a crank. <laughs> but a lot of money's changing hands over this job, and we have to be absolutely sure that everything goes without a hitch. So I'm afraid we're going to have to work with someone else this time around. I'm sorry, guy. I can see you in the dark. Are you ready now? <laughs> yes. Shh. It's nearly over. Then you can sleep. And then I'll see you. You won't see me. If I sleep. Only if you sleep. <gasps> My friend. Stand up. I know the words. Dear guy. Dear guy. Friday night at 8.25. Friday night. And you're ready to leave your room. Leave your room. You check to make sure you've got the gun with you. Several bullets and the key to my back door. The lock on the back door is broken, but bring the key with you in case they've had it mended by then. The train leaves you at Great Neck Falls. You go out the third exit and out of the main road. The small road on the left leads you up a hill. At the crest is a footpath. You take it. You walk 60 paces and you see a lamp with an oily blue and gold halo. It marks a gate. You open the gate and walk 40 paces to the wall. You jump over the wall. You see the house in the dark. Run straight toward it. And in the dark, go up the steps to the back door. To the stairs now. And don't forget that the fourth and the seventh stairs squeak. And so does the start of the landing. So remember to skip four, skip seven, and step wide at the top. You can remember that. It's a syncopated rhythm. At the top of the stairs, you hear the grandfather clock. The butler's door is just beside it. This is the closest you'll come to anyone. A house should reflect the habits of those who live in it. For instance, will the child 
pause at the window for the view before he climbs the 15 steps to his bedroom to sleep? My father's door is just on the right. You follow the snoring. There will be a moon, so you may see the shape of his head against the pillow. You take the gun from your pocket and aim it at his head. It is not a person. It is a target. And remember, you've done this many times before. This is only one of the times. Honestly, it's not bad up there, and the work is good, which leads me to listen to what I wanted to talk to you about. Isn't my wife beautiful? I know it's not oh, my wife. As beautiful as a white bridge. <laughs> you remember that? Guy, I've been trying to tell you. I've been appointed to the Alberta Dam Committee. It's a white bridge, Guy. It's what you've always wanted to build. How do you know they'd have me? They'd have you. I've already put your name forward. Acceptance is guaranteed. Oh, I don't know if it's me anymore. Well, how can it not be you? you? You never let up about it at college. You were going to build a white bridge with a span like an angel's wing. Don't you remember? Of course I remember. White bridge was practically a middle name. How can it not be you anymore? I've grown up. Or something. Hey, you haven't kissed the best man. Oh, I have, but you look so good, I'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm off to practice my speech. <laughs> Tell me you'll think about it, guy, huh? You only live once. And a kiss for you. Mm -hmm. Guy, you've got a scar under your eye. You've covered it up. How did you get a scar under your eye? It's nothing. And another one here. Um, and on your wrist. What happened to you? Oh, Guy, I've come to offer you my best wishes. Ignore Mr. Etiquette here. I'm Anne Haynes. Aren't you going to introduce me to your wife, Guy? This is Charles Bruno. Pleased to meet you. You know, you must be the most beautiful bride I've ever seen. And you must have seen thousands. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you know Guy? Oh, I've known Guy just about all of his life, haven't I, Guy? That's right, yes. You could even say I was his closest friend. Isn't that true, Guy? Yes, that's true. Well, he, he's never mentioned you before. Where did you meet? Where was it, Guy? At the uh, Parker Art Institute, I think. Oh, yes, at the Parker. How long ago was it? Oh, you, Anne, your mother wants a picture. Oh, be right back. <laughs> I thought I was never going to see you again. It's a time for celebration. And now we've been seen together by all these people. Nobody can sniff their wings. We've left them running in all directions, and I just wanted to share your success with you. You were a brilliant guy. I ran the wrong way in the woods. Got caught up in the trees. I've got scars and bruises. Anne's noticed. Nobody is smart enough to figure this out. We can relax now. We're immortal. We're above them all. Oh, they're about to make the speeches. I'll go fill my glass. You don't want to stay for the speeches. I wouldn't miss them for the world. They're about you, my friend. Let me salute you, Guy, and you, Anne Haynes. May we all live a long and peaceful and contented life together. To that. To that. I'm not answering any of your questions. Charles, your mother has asked me to stay on. What for? Some people are concerned about your father's death. I'm concerned, but if we need a private investigator, I'd vote for getting a good one. Yeah, you know, but I knew him best. I'm going to talk to my mother about this. I don't see why we should keep my dad's minder on the payroll when my dad's not even alive to mind. Oh, 
It's not the money, Charles. I'd work on this case for nothing. Your father was my friend. You were his staff. He didn't have any friends. He didn't pay for it. <laughs> you didn't know your father, Charlie. I know he hated me. That's where you're wrong. Well, maybe you don't know everything either. <laughs> maybe. Can I go now? In case you haven't noticed, my mother's not well. I know, and I hope she gets better soon. There are some questions I'd like to ask her. Well, you know where to find me. I'm sure you will. Yep. Just one more thing. What's your connection with Mrs. Guy Haynes? Why do you ask that? I noticed from your cash accounts you sent her some flowers. So? I was sick at her wedding. I, I sent some flowers to apologize. Uh-huh. How do you know her? I'm a friend of her husband's. And have you known him long? He was one of the architects we thought of when we were talking about building a house. Well, when were you talking about building a house? Last year. Oh. Who's we? My mother and I. Without your father? My father, too. He never mentioned it to uh, me. All right, my mother and I talked about it in private. We were going to build it as a surprise for that, all right? Uh -huh. We were just discussing it, like we, we discuss a lot of things. We discuss taking trips, too, and we don't tell Dad about them. Huh. Well, why should we? we? You know, most trips we don't even take, just like the house we never built. Is it a crime to talk? I'm going to see that my mother releases you from this assignment. Hmm. I'm going to ask her about that house. She is not well. Have you no decency? Why don't you just go back to the donut shop you crawled out of? Civilians have manners. You don't belong. He didn't seem in particularly high or low spirits. He's a very moody boy. I doubt if I'd have noticed. Uh -huh. Do you think there's anything he's not telling me? Well, do you? Well, you want me to get at the truth, don't you, Mrs. Bruno? Charles knew you were both going away. He knows who he told. Are you saying Charles knows something about this? Well, he was acting strangely about that time. Oh, he was acting strangely about every time. He's a strange boy. Mm -hmm. But Charles wants you to find the murderer as much as I do. He loved his father. Yeah. Have you ever heard of a man called Guy Haynes? Who's he? Uh, an architect. You never meant to hire him to build a house. Build a house? No. Mm. Why would we want to build a house? We have a house. Have one of these canopies while they're hot. You know, I, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else in the world tonight, Anne. Well, I couldn't have sent you home last night in that state anyway. It's nice to have a man in the house when Guy's away. When I build my house, I'm going to build a room in it just for you and Guy. It'll be your room. Oh. I'm going to build my house just down the road from here. Do you think Guy would like that? It'd be lovely to have a friend nearby. I am your friend, your true friend. There's, there's nothing I wouldn't do for Guy. Oh. I love him like a brother, and you like a sister. Oh, you're sweet. He must have found it hard, the, the, the mess with his wife and all that. But, frankly, you're a much better wife to him than she was, aren't you? I mean, I mean... Who wouldn't swap her for you any day? Can I, uh... Oh, like I said, help yourself. Thanks. You know, we, we've got to learn we have the power to make our lives better. People go on acting as if they got forever. Things like Miriam make sense in the kind of numb dream most of us find ourselves living in, but they should be disposed of quickly and cleanly as soon as we wake from that dream. Her loss is no loss to the world. That's for sure. I didn't know you knew her. Oh, I knew her. Well, I, I, I mean, I, I never met her, but I know her of old. They all deserve to be taught a thing or two, and women like you should dance on their graves. Yeah, yeah, like, like that, like oh, this. Careful. Hey, hey. Careful, you're gonna fall. No, I never fall. I tell you, there's so much I could say to you. If our spirits weren't so suffocated by the facts of our existence. But they are. So I can't. <laughs> we just have to live with that. Guy is everything to me. Before I die, I'm going to go to Metcalf, which is a town I have never been to. I'm going to go to Metcalf on a pilgrimage, 
and see the place where Guy was born and go to the kingdom of fun to pay my respects at the place where that woman met her not untimely end. Ironically, if not downright comically, on the island of love. Oh, that nice guy. Oh, darling, hello. Welcome home, guy. Your friend Charles telephoned last night and came over with some more lovely flowers and... And it got so late, I put him in the spare room. We miss you, Guy, but we, we had a great time together, haven't we, Annie? Sweetie, let me get you a drink. I'll do it. Uh, I don't want a drink. You'll have to go now, Bruno. I'm tired, and I'm ready for bed. Oh, no, Guy, Let's come on. Let's all have a drink we'll... together. He's waited all night and all day for you. That's right. Besides, it's too late for me to get a train now. I'll call you a taxi. But, sweetie, it'll be so expensive. He can afford it. Don't call just yet. Let me get you a drink, then call if you still want to, huh? What'll it be, Brandy? Yes, and one for me. Two brandies and one scotch on the rocks. Oh, Annie, there's no ice. I'll get some. I want you to excuse yourself and go. I have to tell you something. Arthur Gerard's got your name. He's a detective. He's on his way to see you, Guy, but he's got nothing, nothing, nothing but your name. You want him to find you here? I won't be down here. I'll be upstairs in the spare room like last night. No, you won't. Please, Guy, let me stay. No. Just one more night. I'll throw you out if you don't go on your own. I'll tell. I'll tell her everything if you don't let me stay. Why do I have to threaten you? Why can't you just let me stay? Because you want me to stay. Because I don't want you to stay. But stay if you have to. I feel nothing for you. Guy, stop saying things like that. God, I wish I could go to some other place where nobody knows us at all. Some other planet, even. This world is so tiny after what we've done. I feel like my life was so so compressed in that one minute on the island in Metcalf when I was doing something for you, guy. And now it seems like the rest of my life is just going to be chasing that moment again. I, I can't have it back. So whether you want it or not, my life is yours. I have nowhere else to go. Ice. Ice. Oh, okay, a, a, a brandy for you and and one for you, to the three of us. May we all live long and uh, and happily. Charles, you're shaking. No, it'll 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 stop in a second. You better sit down. It'll be fine. Come on, guy, drink, huh? I, I'm sorry, you two. If I just get a, a bit more down, yeah. I'll be... Who on earth? Don't answer it. I better go upstairs. Take your glass. Yeah, well, I, I. Oh, uh, better take. The bottle. I'll, I'll buy you a case in the morning. Oh, we we met at the Parker Institute in December, didn't didn't we, Guy? Huh? Guy, what's going on? Who's at the door? It's Arthur Gerard, a detective. A detective? Bruno's not upstairs. All right. You you want me to lie? Yes, for God's sake, yes. Hello. I'm sorry to disturb you at this hour. Are you Guy Haynes? Yes? I'm Arthur Gerard from the Confidential Detective Bureau. Can I ask you a couple of questions? Come in. Uh, this is my wife, Anne. Uh, I'll uh, leave you two alone. No, no, please. I'd like to talk to you both. C can I get you something to drink? Well, I like scotch with ice if you have them. We have both. Uh, Mr. Haynes... Do you know a man named Charles Bruno? Yes, oh, very slightly. Uh, scotch with ice. Thank you. Did you know his father was murdered last March? No, I didn't. Neither did I. Do you remember where you first met Charles Bruno? At the Parker Art Institute. Mm. Recently? I think around last December. What was the nature of your meeting? I... Uh, chance, really. Not business? Uh, well, did you discuss building a house for him? <laughs> to tell you the truth, um, I can't remember much of what we discussed. I met him at the Christmas party, and I was rather the worse for wear. <laughs> but, but you remember me? I'll write it down. I'll start now. I'll write it all down from start to finish. And give it to you, and it'll be out of me for good. <sighs> you look at it. 
You see for me. I can't, I can't see. <sighs> Good morning. Go away. Can I have a minute's peace? Go away. Did you sleep well? I was at a friend's. Which friend is that? None of your business. No? It was Matt Levine, since it interests you so much. Matt Levine is in custody on a fraud charge. I thought you knew that. All right, I met a woman. I met a woman and I didn't want you to know about it because it's none of your goddamn business. What was her name? Was it Ann Haynes? I told you, I hardly know her. I was there last night. At the home of Ann and Guy Haynes. They gave me a drink. The reason I thought you might be there was because I asked for a scotch on the rocks and she gave it to me without going into the kitchen for the ice. They were both drinking brandy, but there was a bowl of fresh ice on the bar. <laughs> they had fresh ice in the living room, so that meant I was upstairs? <laughs> no, no, that doesn't mean that at all. Hey, you're some detective. Who taught you, Mickey Mouse? No, no, that doesn't mean that at all. It can't mean that if you weren't upstairs. Exactly. But it got me thinking, if you were upstairs, why would you be there? I'm not in the mood for this. Of course you're not, Charlie. Don't call me Charlie! Are you a bit shaky this morning? You got nothing on me. I know the road you're leading up, but you won't get anything on me because there is nothing to get. Do you want to know what I was thinking? No! All right. I'll go. Now, go ahead, then. Tell me. You're wasting my time, but you might as well tell me now to get it off your chest. Well, I asked Guy Haynes what he thought of you when he first met you. He said he was impressed by how much you drank. He said, when I met you at that party at the Parker Art Institute, you didn't bother with trips to the bar. You just filled up your glass from a silver hip flask you had in your possession, which had grapes and apples engraved on it. Well, I thought that was interesting because I remembered that flask, but I haven't seen it for a while. Not since December or maybe even longer. I asked your mother last night when she saw it last. She had it in a box. It was mailed to her from the Hotel La Fonda where you stayed in Santa Fe. You left it in the room, so they mailed it to her. So here it is, Charles. You may have it. But then I thought, if Guy Haynes remembers seeing this flask, and you haven't had it in your possession since June of last year, maybe he's a little mixed up. Maybe you met him earlier than December. I know you had the flask with you in June in Santa Fe because that's where you left it. So perhaps he saw it in Santa Fe. He did go down to the southwest about that time. But he couldn't have seen the flask in Santa Fe because he got off the train before then. He got off in Metcalf. So if he didn't see the flask in Santa Fe, where did he see it? Then it occurred to me that it was just possible that maybe he saw it on the train. Maybe you were on the same train together, traveling down to the great southwest. I had the travel records checked, and it seems I struck it lucky. You were on that train together. So I wondered if perhaps you met each other when you were on that train and spoke to each other, and if that's maybe where he saw your hip flask. I was able to get some people on the phone last night. One of them was the waiter who served you both dinner in your compartment. He remembered you. You tipped him with a 50. Another man remembered you as well. And that was the taxi driver who drove you from Magnolia Street in Metcalf, Texas, to Lake Metcalf's Kingdom of Fun, following a car with a red-haired girl in it. You didn't tip him at all. You were in too much of a hurry. The hotel books, phone bills, train records... Everything gets you to Metcalf, Texas for a 24-hour trip just in time for the previous Mrs. Haynes to get herself killed. But you know who I feel most sorry for, Charlie? Guy Haynes. I know you. What you must have put that man through to get him to kill your father, I don't wish 
to imagine how you must have told him he owed you because you'd got him free. Free to start his life anew. Free to build beautiful things. But he was free of everything but the worst thing not to be free of in this world. And that is you, Charlie Bruno. Charles. I'm dying. I'm dying. I've got the DT. The DT's. I'm dying. I'll get you a drink. Uh, hurry. Here hurry. you go, sweetie. Hey, drink this. Come uh, on. Drink this. I'll, I'll, I'll get a doctor. Uh, don't let him take me away. Lock all the doors. They won't take you away. They will. Don't. They will. Don't tell him I won't drink again. I swear it with all my heart. Mother, please. Arthur, what should I do? Mother, my neck. My, my lips. I can't. I can't. I can't. I, I, won't, me. I won't let them touch you, baby. I won't let them oh, take you away. Uh, Come on now. Shh. Oh, I'll get you a wet cloth. I'll be right back, sweetie. I'll be right back. Everything's gonna be fine. You're gonna be all right. Trust me. I've seen people come back from farther out than where you are now. You won't be able to drink another drink with even a drop of alcohol in it for the rest of your life, or you'll die. But other than that, you'll be fine. And I want you to know I'm off the case now. Guy Haynes has paid for what he's done. He'll always be paying for it. And you, well, you're not likely to do anything like that again, are you? So why should I have you sent to prison? The truth is, you're already there. the old abandoned train cars. They light up as the trains go past and disappear again like ghosts. I thank you for coming. It's the last time. I've told Anne. Everything? I've written it all down. The whole story. She's reading it now. They're not going to catch us, guy. Gerard was the only one who could have figured it out, and he's gone home for good. It doesn't matter now. It's outside me now. I, I, I brought you a Plato book. Keep it. I've had it all this time. You're, you're not going to let me build a house near you, are you? Build a house where you want. You won't be welcome in mine. Doctor says I can't drink anymore. Not a drop. That's the best thing all around. What am I going to do? <laughs> You know, when I was alone with Anna, there was a minute when she was on the couch with her head back and her neck was high and it was the lightest thing about her, her neck. And, and, and I thought <laughs> I could get even closer to you now. But then I thought no one could feel about me the way you feel about Anne. You can't kill that fact. I feel like I'm in the space between life and death. Bruno. Call me by my first name. Charles. Oh, not even Charlie. Charles. You hate the sound of it. Don't climb on that. I'm climbing to heaven. Get down from there. Can you hear me, guy? Yes. When we first met, you read to me. Well, I found a passage I thought might interest you. Read it down here. This is love, O Socrates, for the sake of which all the former labors were endured. It is eternal, unproduced, indestructible, neither subject to increase nor decay, not like other things, partly beautiful and partly deformed, not at one time beautiful and at another time not, not beautiful in relation to one thing and deformed in relation to another. Not here, beautiful, and there deformed. Not beautiful in the estimation of one person and deformed in that of another. It is one thing forever. 
And all that is beautiful is beautiful because of it. Oh, Socrates, what must be the life of him who dwells with and gazes on that which it becomes us all to seek? To him alone is accorded the prerogative of bringing forth not images and shadows of virtue, but virtue itself. For he is in contact not with a shadow, but with the reality of it. And the production and nourishment of which he becomes dear to the gods. And if such a privilege is conceded to any human being, is made himself immortal. There's a train coming! If I worked my entire life doing good, I'd only know the shadow of it. There's a difference between me and you, guy. You could kill a hundred men and you'd still know the reality and I'd only know the shadow. Get down here! I thought I'd be immortal, but I haven't even had mortality. I had one minute's life on an island in Metcalf. No, please, calm down! I'm not coming down, guy. You know why? Jesus Christ! Because you didn't call me by my first name! Enough. I'll take my hand. What will I do now, Anne? What will I do? I've read your story. I, I've burned it now, and, and it's gone. You can't burn it, though. You can't just burn but it. If you stay here now, you'll be found with him, and it'll never be over. Come with me. Come on, your, your friend called again. My friend? You've got work to do, Guy. He wants you to build a bridge. Let not young souls be smothered out before they do great deeds and flaunt their pride. It is the world's one crime, its babes grow dull. It's poor our ox like limp and late and Not that they starve, but starve so dreamlessly. Not that they sow, but seldom reap. Not that they serve. But have no gods to serve Not that they die But that they die like sheep Strangers on a Train by Craig Warner, based on the novel by Patricia Highsmith. Anton Lesser played Charles Bruno. Michael Sheen was Guy Haynes. Saskia Reeves, Anne Haynes. And Bill Nye, Gerard. Jane Whittenshaw was Elsie Bruno. Dennis Hawthorne, Alex. Roger May, Myers. Stephen Critchlow, Treacher. Andrew Branch, Freer. And John Hartley, the cop. Other parts were played by members of the cast. Original music composed by Craig Warner, with technical support from Elizabeth Parker at the BBC Radiophonic Workshop. The pianist was Pete Rosser. 
The Leaden Eyed was sung by Craig Warner. Strangers on a Train was directed by Andy Jordan. 